Hello again, everybody. My name is Tori Compton. I'm the uh, yoga instructor for Texas A&M Central Texas. And so we're ready for our second installment of socially distanced yoga mindfulness. Um, so much like our first example, we're going to, or our first video, we're going to start with a little bit of mindfulness. We'll do a bunch of moving and then um, I'll set aside time towards the end of this video for uh, restfulness, um, final relaxation. So at that point, it'll be up to you how long you wanna stay in restfulness, how much time you need to sit there and um, think to yourself or not think about anything. Um, and we'll kind of discuss that a little bit more when we move into mindfulness portions of the class. Um, but yeah, so this should be about an hour long. Um, the, la the beginning couple of minutes, mindfulness, and then the last maybe five or 10 minutes will be mindfulness as well. Um, just another heads up, my cat Bayorn is all over the place. He now has a Tinkerbell around his neck. So you might hear a little something, something here and there. It's just, he likes to be all up in my space. So you might see Bayorn, you might not. Um, sorry. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started with some yoga. So socially distanced yoga mindfulness. Actually, I'll do the beginning mindfulness right up here next to you guys. So uh, let's go ahead, like we did in our first class, let's find any comfortable seated posture that we like. So I like to go into a crisscross a happy pose, Sukhasana. So just simple crisscross seated posture. Uh, take the hips and root them in strong to the mat or the ground. I'm not using a mat up here, but root the hips down strong beneath you. Option to crisscross the legs or take the legs way out long um, or find a butterfly posture, and we'll talk about that later too. Any seated posture that works well for you, as long as you're able to root the hips down strong. And then we're gonna build up the spine piece by piece so it feels like we're seated tall, proud, uh, confident of where we've been, where we're going. And then once we've got that tall spine and that firm foundation, let's roll the shoulders back and down so that it feels like we're not shrugging up and it feels like we're not slumping forward. So we build up the spine and roll back a little bit and then let the shoulders rest heavy to either side. Um, next, we'll try to relax the face a little bit. So maybe we'll choose to look down at the ground in front of us, or maybe we'll choose to close the eyes completely. But once we have the eyes relaxed, let's go ahead and relax our jaw too. Let's try to let the jaw rest away. <sighs> okay. Now, once we've relaxed the, uh, the face, let's take three long and steady breaths. Let the inhale rise to full capacity. And let the exhale fall away. One more breath. Awesome. When you're ready, let's go ahead and blink open the eyes. I'm gonna move back to my mat now, but we're gonna stay in this seated posture. So hang in there. There's Baron. Any seated posture that you like, we're still remaining in that place. We're still keeping the spine tall. We're still rolling the shoulders down and back to a more restful place, okay? So now that we've got our eyes open and our awareness up, let's go ahead and sweep the palms wide and tall overhead. Like last time, when we reach up overhead, let's also relax the shoulders away from the ears a little bit. That way it doesn't feel like we're scrunching too much. Relax a little bit. Let's turn to our right side. Let's go ahead and look to that open space. Turn the heart, the shoulders, kind of rotate the belly button a little bit. And let's drop the right hand to the space behind us on the ground. And drop the left hand across the lap just to hold steady on the opposite side of the, uh, on that right knee. And then let's turn to look back beyond that right shoulder towards maybe the back of our mat, to the back of our space. One big breath. Remember the spine is still tall here. And then exhale to unwind into neutral. Awesome. Once we get back to neutral with the heart, the belly button, the shoulders, we're going to sweep the palms wide and tall. Relax the shoulders at the top. And then we'll exhale and turn to our left side. So left hand will come to the mat behind us. Right hand will cross the lap. We'll still keep the spine tall. 
We're just going to start to look and turn with our heart, our shoulders, maybe a little bit of our belly button. Okay, look back beyond our shoulder and find a focal point that the eyes can rest on a corner, a point in the room, and then exhale to unwind. Awesome. Come back to your neutral place. We'll lift the spine again. Sweep the palms wide and tall. And while we're here at the mat, we'll relax the shoulders. And then we'll take our exhale and swing the palms way behind your back, like you're reaching for something behind you. I'm going to rotate real quick. So because we're reaching for something behind us, it is up to you if you feel comfortable enough in the shoulders today to bring the palms together and lace the fingers. Maybe you feel like leaving the elbows soft, or maybe you feel like pushing the palms towards the back of the room. Whatever works best for you. If you lace, if you're pushing, if you're not laced, but you are pushing, it's all up to you here. So it's all up in the shoulders, and then we're going to lift the face to the sky, really push the chin up towards the ceiling. And then let's exhale, drag the palms heavy beside us, shake it out, look back down to the ground before us. And then I want you to exaggerate. Tuck the chin into the chest and look straight down to the lap, the ankles. And exaggerate a stretch running down the back of the neck here. Okay, rock the head a little bit left, a little bit right. Awesome. Okay, find that stretch traveling across the upper back. Lift the face into neutral. Awesome. Let's see if we can start to build ourselves up here. So let's start low and then build ourselves up today. So we're going to move into our tabletop posture here. That's going to be hands and knees. So however you feel comfortable adjusting in your space, we're going to set the knees to the mat and we're going to set the hands to the mat. Try, try. Okay. So tabletop posture, we're going to try and draw the spine as level and flat as we can, trying to mimic the levelness of the ground beneath us. And like last time, we're going to open up the hands super wide, starfish hands right beneath the shoulders. And then we're going to try and relax the elbows again. So again, I'll show you like last time. I mentioned the fact that a lot of times when we come in these tabletop postures or we're supporting our shell, ourselves with our arms, we tend to lock out the elbows, push the eye of the elbow forward, and then tense up in the shoulders. That's going to be really painful after a while. So try to release a little bit of that tension so the elbows feel like they have a little bounce and then you don't feel like you're clenching so hard um, in the shoulders and upper arm. Awesome. Hands spread wide, elbows softened. Okay, and there we are. So now that we've got our tabletop posture, let's try what we call our cat and our cow for our yoga posture today. So we're gonna inhale and we're gonna feel an expansion in the rib cage. We're going to inhale and drop the belly button down to the mat and let the belly feel like it's stretching with the inhale. And then we're going to exhale and we're going to push the belly button up towards the sky and look back. And that's our cat pose. Inhale, drop the belly button heavy, look forward, cow pose. Exhale, sweep the belly up and look back, cat. Okay, let's try this two more times, flowing with your own breath. Inhale and exhale. And inhale, and exhale. The hard part is trying to not lock out those elbows the whole time we're here. Draw the spine nice and level again. Let me remove my glasses. Okay. Now that we're back in our neutral tabletop, we're going to challenge our abdominals a little bit today. So I want to challenge you to kick the left leg long behind you and hover at hip height, kind of like you're pointing the toe towards the back of the room. And then we're going to try a little bit of crunches here. So let's take our exhale, bring the knee towards our nose and arch the back like we did in cat. Inhale, expand out long, point the toe. Half spinal balance. Exhale, cheetah. Inhale, spinal balance. Exhale, cheetah. All right, if you feel confident enough, you can move a little bit quicker. Let's try three more. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Last time we'll reach, we'll bring the knee in towards the nose, and then I want to extend that leg way out long and drop the toe to the mat. So tuck the toe under way back there so you've got a good grip in the um, upper ball of the foot and the toes, okay? And then we're going to open up. So let's take our right ankle back here and let's sweep it out behind us like a kickstand, and then let's rock up 
on our right hip and shoulder, reaching our left palm to the sky. Sorry, I look a little unbalanced here. That's all right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said yesterday, it's more about how you feel in the body rather than how perfect it looks. Okay, awesome. So now that we've opened up, we're in our side plank here. We've got our right palm right beneath our shoulder, fingertips spread out wide, elbows a little soft, okay? I wanna try and sweep with our breath here. So we're wide open across the heart space now, but let's take our exhale, sweep that left palm in front of the body and act like you're threading that left arm under our right arm and twist. And then inhale, unwind, rise back up to the sky. Exhale, sweeping breath and twist. Inhale to rise. Last time, exhale to sweep and rise back up. Awesome, bring both palms, both knees to the mat. Turn the heart towards the front of the room again. Lift up the toes off the mat, roll the ankles round, point the toe, flex the heel. All right, and rest the legs again. Let's try all of that on the opposite side. So we've got palms just beneath the shoulders, fingers spread out wide, elbows soft. Inhale, extend the right leg way out long behind you, point the toe, try to hover at hip height. Okay, and let's try some of those crunches. So we'll start with four just to see how we feel, and then we can try those last three a little bit quicker if you feel confident with it. So the first four, we're just gonna exhale, bring it in, arch the back, inhale, reach out long, exhale, crunch, and extend. Okay, cheetah pose, half spinal balance. One more. And then we're gonna try our last three. We're gonna see if we're comfortable going quick or if we wanna take our time. So we'll exhale and inhale and inhale. Last time, cheetah, and spinal balance. And we're gonna drop the toe down to the mat. So we'll tuck the toe under, the ball of the foot, and the toe connect to the ground. Once you've got a good grip on that foot, let's open up. So like last time, the supporting leg is gonna sweep out like a kickstand. Okay, I'm gonna start first facing away, and then I'm gonna rotate. So don't feel like you have to hurry or anything. But we'll rock back on our left hip and shoulder, reaching the right palm to the sky and turning the foot so that the heel gets the plant, so that you have the whole inner blade of the foot connected to the ground. Okay, this is where I'm gonna rotate. Hang in there, stay with me. That's running across the room, not bad. Whew. All right, so now we've got our opposite side plank. We're trying to stack one hip over the other. We're trying to stack one shoulder over the other. That palm in the ground is spread out wide, elbow a little bit soft, and then the palm overhead is reaching straight up. Okay. We've got it. Let's sweep with our breath. Exhale to guide in front of the body. Maybe line it up underneath the rib cage. And then inhale, rise up. Okay, exhale, sweeping breath and twist. Inhale to unwind. One more. Exhale, sweeping breath and rise. Awesome. Let's make our way to tabletop again. Both hands, both knees. I'm gonna to rotate to the front of my mat again. Awesome. Now that we have our tabletop, let's take a little bit of a break. Let's, hmm, let's go ahead and pull the hips down and meet the heels. Drop the heart down to the knees. Reach the palms way, way out long in front of us. Reach, drop the forehead heavy between the biceps. <sighs> Great breath in the body, full inhale. And full exhale. Awesome. Look forward to the thumbs. Let's rise up to our tabletop, hands and knees. Fingertips spread wide, elbows a little soft. I'm gonna keep saying it because I want you to keep trying just to see. Okay, let's tuck the toes under behind us and let's make our way to our first downward facing dog here. So we're gonna push the hips up to the sky and to complete our down dog, push the heart back towards the knees. You can keep the knees soft today. You don't have to lock out strong legs. You can keep them soft as long as you're pushing the heart back. Look up to the toes, look up to the ankles, to the knees, towards the belly button. Awesome. Let's sweep our right leg high behind us, three-legged dog. And then let's bring our knee towards our nose and try to plant the foot beneath the body. And let's keep on scooting that right foot forward until we have the knee safe over the ankle, lined up nice and safe. 
And then let's drop our left knee down to the mat behind us, untuck the left toe. And we've got our low lunge here today, whereas yesterday we were standing tall, okay? Let's climb up over this right leg and try to stack up the spine tall and proud here. As tall as we can get it, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I will say, when you find yourself in a low, um, a low lunge like this, it makes it a little bit easier on the back knee if you have uh, that knee back at an angle rather than resting right straight up over the top of it. So if you can try to scoot that back knee at a little bit of an angle, and I have my towel up here, so a good opportunity would be to set our towel beneath that back knee if we needed it, okay? Extra cushion if we need it. Either way, we're in our low lunge. Whatever place we've chosen to set ourselves up today, we've got the spine tall and proud. We've got the shoulders down and back. Let's sweep the palms tall overhead and relax the shoulders. And I'm going to try a little bit of a sweeping breath here as well. So we're going to do a bunch of twists today. Since we have our right knee in front of us, let's start on our right side. Let's exhale, sweep the right palm back past our thigh, our hip. We're going to open up to shoulder height like we did yesterday, like we're greeting a friend way across the room, okay? Inhale, sweep that back palm forward, rise up, nice and neutral, okay? Now let's open up with the hips. Let's exhale, bring the left palm low, and take our time turning the heart, the shoulder, maybe the belly button a little bit. Awesome, shoulder height. Inhale, sweeping into neutral. Exhale, right palm takes us back, shoulder height. Inhale to neutral. Exhale, left palm. Awesome. Let's do one more on each side. Come back to neutral. Exhale, right palm. Inhale, neutral. Exhale, left palm. Awesome. Come back to your neutral place. And exhale, bring both palms to the mat. Okay, I'm going to try to make this a little bit easier for us. Let's go ahead and take, uh, let's tuck our back toe under behind us, our left toe, lift the left knee off of the mat, settle into the palms, and let's see if we can take this right foot back to meet the left, push the hips to the sky, push the heart towards the knees, soft or strong, you're the boss here, okay? Your downward facing dog. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. All right, best effort, awesome. Let's sweep our left leg high behind us, three-legged dog. Let's bring the knee forward and plant that left foot strong beneath the body. And again, we'll try to scoot that foot forward so the knee is safe over the ankle. And when we feel strong, we'll drop the back knee to the mat. We'll untuck the back toe. Awesome. Again, we'll try to set it back at an angle so that we don't stack ourselves up too tall over it. Or we'll use our towel if we need it. Okay. We'll climb up over the left leg. Aha, okay. So now we've decided how we feel about our back knee. We've decided how we feel about our balance. Let's go ahead and build up the spine. Roll the shoulders back. When you're ready, inhale, palms to the sky. Relax the shoulders. Awesome. Let's try three sweeping breaths on each side, on, on this side as well. So let's take our exhale. Bring the left palm low past the thigh and hip, palm spine, shoulder height, twisting at the heart, the heart, the shoulders, maybe a little at the belly button. Inhale, turn to neutral. Exhale, right palm takes us back. Take your time. We're opening up with the hips. I feel like this one's a little harder than the other. Inhale, turn to neutral. Exhale, left palm takes us back, shoulder height. Inhale to neutral. Exhale, right palm takes us back. And inhale. All right, one more time on each side. Left palm takes us back. Neutral. Exhale, right palm takes us back. Inhale, neutral. Yes. All right. Exhale, forward fold. Palms find the mat. Ooh, let's try this again. We're making our way to downward facing dog. So we tuck the back toe under. Lift the back knee, left foot meets the right foot, hips to the sky, push the heart back, look up towards the belly button, look forward towards the thumbs, drop the knees to the mat, 
untuck the toes behind us, pull the hips down to the heels, pull the heart to the knees, and an opportunity here in child's pose. Either continue reaching forward or drop the elbows to the mat or cross the arms under the forehead or sweep the hands way back if the shoulders are tense today. Whatever you choose to do with the arms, let the forehead drop heavy to the ground. Let the elbows feel restful if you like. Let the shoulders drop if you like. And don't be afraid to change your mind either. Okay, one more great breath here, full inhale, complete exhale, excellent. All right, let's look forward on the mat. Let's rise up to our tabletop, hands and knees. Awesome, also an excellent opportunity to have the towel beneath our knees or beneath our wrists if we're feeling a little tension today. It's okay if it's a, a little bit different than we're used to. Our yoga practice is never going to be the same anyway. So, all right. From our tabletop posture, let's tuck the toes under, push the hips up to the sky, push the heart back towards the knees, soft or strong, okay? Look forward to the thumbs, walk those feet up step by step. And then let's hang with the heart, nice and heavy. Drop the crown of the head heavy to the ground. Shake the head yes. Shake the head no. Ooh, whatever makes you comfortable. Sorry, my hair is all over the place. Okay. Let's climb up to the top of the shin bone. Without pushing directly on the kneecap, we rise up. We level the heart to the ground again, half lift. Exhale to hang heavy. Okay. Wrap the arms strong around the legs, maybe, or behind the calf muscles or the ankles. Shake the head yes. Shake the head no. Awesome. Let's drop the palms heavy to the ground. Let's rise up to our half lift. And this time we're going to rise all the way into standing. So let's go ahead and leave those knees soft. Sit back on the hips a little bit. Press up into a tall place with a tall spine all the way. Roll the shoulders down and back and shake it out. Get a little loosey-goosey if you need to. Shake it out, punch it out, whatever helps. Okay, now that we've come into a tall standing place, I want to practice a little bit of what we call our chair flow here. So we're going to practice like we're trying to sit into a chair, but that's going to be the hard part on the legs because we're not, unless you want to use a chair as a guide because then you could try to sit just on the rim and then rise back up. But anyway, let me... Let me go ahead and show you what we're up to. We're going to plant the feet strong beneath the body here. So we're going to rock the body weight a little forward into the toes. We're going to pull it back a little into the heels. We're going to sway with it a little bit. Okay, maybe we even feel like peeling up the toes away from each other and then rolling them down flat again, just to get a good grip all the way from each toe across the top of the foot, all the way down to the heel of the foot. Good connection, okay? Like yesterday, I'm gonna mention that we're gonna soften our knees here. Let it go, you don't have to be tense here. Okay, from there, we're gonna stack up the hips, the shoulders, the spine, tall and proud. We're gonna roll the shoulders down and back so it feels like the heart space is wide open, ready to welcome the greatest breath that we have. And we found our way into Tadasana, mountain pose, just so. Okay. To move into our chair pose here, I want to challenge you to inhale, sweep the palms wide and tall overhead, relax the shoulders at the top, okay? Look up to the sky, push the chin up to the ceiling, and then if you are comfortable reaching with the fingertips, lifting from those hands, we're going to lean the heart just a little bit back, okay? We'll find our way back into a neutral spine, and then from here, Let's exhale, soften the knees, sit back on the hips, and reach towards the front of the room in front of you. Okay, you can move as low into your chair or stay as high as you want, but we're bending into the knees and we're pushing the hips back, like we're looking for a little tiny kindergarten chair behind us. Okay, that way we carry the body weight back into our heels, and then our toes should be free to wiggle just a little bit. Should be is an interesting word. It's your practice, not mine. But we want to carry the body weight back into the heel of the foot and reach forward with the hands. And that's our chair. Okay? Uktanasana. 
Let's use our next exhale to look down at our toes at the ground and forward fold so that knees are still soft, spine is still long. So now we can drop the crown of the head heavy, shake the head yes and no. All right, inhale, rise up, half lift. Exhale, hang heavy to the ground. We're gonna move into a chair from here. So we're gonna exhale, soften the knees, sit down on the hips like you're looking for a little tiny chair behind you. And then inhale, swing the palms forward to rise as tall as you want. So again, you can go as tall in your chair as you want, or you can stay as low in your chair. So we're bending at the knee, taking the body weight back into the heel of the foot and pushing the hips like we're looking for a chair behind us, okay? And then we'll use our next inhale, look to the sky, extend the arms and legs, lift with the heart and the hands, lean a little bit back, find our neutral spine. Okay, let's move into our chair. Soften the knees, sit down in the hips, reach forward. Okay, as low or as high as you want. Exhale, forward fold. Go loosey-goosey in the shoulders, the neck. Okay, inhale, half lift. Exhale, hang heavy. Next breath, we'll move into chair. Sit down on the hips, bring the weight back into the heel. Swing the palms forward to rise. Awesome, find your chair. Okay, inhale, look to the sky, extend the arms and legs. When you're ready, reach with the hands and the heart, lean a little bit back. Come back to neutral. Exhale forward, oh, let's not forward fold all the way, let's sit into our chair, sorry. Aha, okay, we find our chair. And then we'll exhale forward fold. Awesome, loosey goosey in the shoulders and the neck. Inhale, half lift. Exhale to release. Next breath. We'll exhale to sit back into our chair last time. Inhale, rise as much as you like. Find chair. Okay, last time rising up, reaching with the hands and the heart. Lean a little back. Okay, find our neutral spine, drop the palms heavy. Check it out, loosey-goosey, shoulders, legs. Just breathe for a moment, okay? We've got our mountain again, mountain pose, Tadasana. Okay, let's try to focus on a little bit of a balance here. So let's see how we feel practicing one of the most probably iconic yoga postures that you can immediately recognize, which would be our tree pose. So let's see how we feel about it today. You don't have to turn. I'm just turning so that you've got a better view of where we're going with tree. And by all means, you're more than welcome to watch me practice first and listen to directions and then choose to practice or not to practice, depending on how confident you feel with the posture. But I'm going to give a lot of different opportunities um, for modifications for if you are um, feeling uneasy about the posture versus if you feel really confident trying to uh, explore a little further. So lots of different options, no pressure. Like I mentioned in our first video, there's no expectation in this practice. There is no room for judgment. That even means for yourself. And there's no room to expect any one thing to happen here, okay? It is all up to you how much or how little you want to participate. To practice our tree posture, our Vrikshasana, uh, let's go ahead and root the feet down strong beneath us. Rock the body weight forward into the toes. Bring the body weight back into the heels. Rock and roll with it. See how you feel. Okay, maybe you're comfortable with the idea of peeling the toes away from each other and then rolling them down flat again. Okay, soften the knees just like earlier. Build up the spine from hips to shoulders, tall and proud. Roll the shoulders down and back and let the shoulders rest beside us so it doesn't feel like we're shrugged, shrugged or hunched. Okay, open up that heart space. Awesome. For tree pose, this is where I'm gonna challenge you to find a focal point before you. Maybe not me, but something that's not moving. Maybe a spot on the wall or a spot on the ground before you. Let your eyes focus on that one singular point that's not moving. 
And then let's go ahead and sweep the palms wide and tall overhead, relaxing the shoulders, of course. And with our eyes relaxed as well, let's bring the hands together over the midline of the body and then draw those thumbs down to heart center. Okay, that's our Anjali Mudra or prayer hands or however you want to name it. Um, but it's hands at heart center, pressing lightly and firmly between the two hands. We create a sort of a balance here. And then elbows come out wide for just kind of a little bit more of a extra balance effort. Okay. So awareness is on that one singular point. And we're gonna shift our body weight to our right side. So we're gonna shift our body weight over to our right leg and we're gonna buckle up our left knee and peel up our left heel. Let me rotate real quick, just in case you need an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, we're on our right side, left knee, left heel lifted. Awesome. Eyes remaining on that focal point. Let's point that left knee to our left side of the room and see if we can scoot that left ankle up to rest on our right ankle. If you have an ankle injury here, don't feel like you actually have to press into that standing ankle. You can keep that space. You don't have to, your posture can look like whatever you need it to look like to serve whatever purpose you need it to serve today. Okay, pace yourself, decide what is comfortable, what is not comfortable and decide how much effort you want to put into the tree and how much you'd rather just kind of feel out that restful place if you can find a restful place for yourself, okay? I'm news for you, you are already in tree posture. You don't have to do anything else if you don't want to, okay? For those of you that are feeling more confident um, or more familiar with tree pose and you think that you would like to explore a little deeper, um, put in uh, work a little further into some more complicated yoga postures, you're more than welcome to practice bringing that left heel, maybe up to the meaty, muscly part of the calf, okay? And practice balancing on the right side alone, maybe, if you feel like it. Um, some people that are very familiar with yoga may even be comfortable reaching down and bringing that left ankle up to the muscly part of the thigh, okay? For our tree pose, whoo, I'm no expert here, okay? But for our tree pose, the most important part is that we're not pushing our ankle into our right standing knee, either just above the knee or just at the knee, okay? That's dangerous. We wanna be mindful. We're gonna keep the ankle at the ground, at the muscly part of the calf, or at the muscly part of the thigh, maybe. Okay, lots of options for tree pose. Lots of options to change your mind. If you're trying to catch your breath, if you're trying to relax your awareness and it's just not working out where you're at, take a step back down again, okay? <sighs> Figure out where you would like the trunk of your tree to rest. When you have the trunk built, then we can reach the hands way out wide like an acrobat, creating the branches of our tree. Or maybe we choose to reach up tall and we can imagine ourselves, I don't know, like a, like a great redwood tree or like a Christmas tree if we wanted. Make your tree your own, okay? No judgment, no expectation. One more great breath. Awesome. Let's bring those hands back to heart center. Let's drop the left foot down to the mat. Shift the body weight back and forth for a moment. Wobble out the ankles, kick out the heels if you need to. I know it feels a little bit awkward for a moment, okay? I've got one more warm up for this ankle before we move on to our opposite tree. So let's plant those feet strong, soften the knees, bump up the spine, open the heart space. <sighs> okay, let's take a walking step back with our right leg the one we were just standing on, the one we were just balancing on. Walking step means we're only going maybe one or two footsteps back. We're not going that far, okay? Shorter stance. This time, let's keep both legs long here. You don't have to lock out the knees. You can keep them a little soft, but let's not line up the knee over the ankle. Let's keep them both long and strong, okay? Sweep the palms tall to the sky. Exhale, drop the hands to the sides of your hips here. 
Okay, Superman, Supergirl, however you want to imagine it. Look, keep that spine tall. Your shoulders keep the heart space wide open. And my challenge for you is to anchor both feet strong in the ground. Take a good grip with the toe, the heel, and the ball of the foot. Okay, both feet strong, both legs long. Okay, let's keep the hips where they are, right here. And let's push the heart towards the front of the room, or the front of the mat. Okay, try to keep the spine tall if you can. And if you're moving that body weight forward and that front leg is tugging, tugging, tugging in the back, you can soften that front knee, but we do want to explore that tugging sensation in the back of our thigh muscle, okay? Big breath. Maybe some of us are comfortable coming all the way close down to the leg. Maybe some of us just want to stay a little bit forward. I'm not the boss of you. You're the boss of you. It's your yoga practice, not mine. Okay, we find ourselves in a shortened stance kind of variation of our pyramid stance. Now let's soften the front knee in front of us so that we can get a good grip pushing down into the mat directly with that right foot. Let's build up the spine tall and proud. Relax the shoulders and hands to our sides. Sorry, let's step our right foot forward to meet our left. I'm getting mixed up, sorry, I'm trying to mirror my, my sides. My goodness, okay. Take out the ankles, shake it out, loosey goosey. All right, let's see if we can try that tree on the opposite side. We've got both feet strong beneath us. Ooh. All right, move a little bit soft. Ah, spine tall, proud, heart space wide open, great breath in and out of the body. Ah, no judgment, no expectation. Uh, no desire for any one thing to be accomplished. We're just moving. We're just breathing. We're playing the edge of our field of discomfort, but we're not bullying ourselves, okay? Settle the eyes on that focal point or maybe a different focal point, something that you can relax the eyes again, okay? Minimal effort. Sweep the palms wide and tall on the inhale. Exhale, bring the hands down to heart center. Okay, awesome. Let's shift our body weight to our left side this time, buckling up our right knee, peeling up our right heel. Awesome. When you feel balanced, let's turn that right knee open towards our side of the room. Okay, again, if we have an injured ankle, we do not have to rest the, uh, the lifted angle against the standing leg. You don't have to if you don't feel comfortable doing that. Okay, but then we can start to play with the idea of practicing a little bit more challenge with our balance. If we wanted to, we could lift that right heel up to the muscly part of our calf. Okay, or we could skip the entire knee. Okay, we have to skip the entire knee and maybe we can bring that right he heel up to our muscly part of our thigh. Maybe, maybe. Okay, we could try and then we could say, ooh, I don't know about that and change our mind. That's okay too. But we've got our eyes on that focal point. We've got the body breathing as naturally as it can here. Okay, settle the awareness. It'll help you settle the breath. <sighs> and um, when you've got the trunk of your tree decided on, and you feel confident with where you're standing, where you're rooted, start to branch out, literally create your branches like an acrobat, maybe out wide, maybe up tall. Not everybody's tree is gonna look different and that's perfectly okay. Your tree today is gonna look very different than your tree tomorrow. And this brings to mind my favorite quote about yoga and for the life of me, I can't remember it, but I'll try to look it up. Um, Go something like a, something along the lines of falling out of a yoga posture makes you human. Choosing to get back into a yoga posture is what makes you a yogi, one that practices yoga. All right, so from our tree, let's bring our hands back to heart center. Let's go ahead and drop that right foot back down to the ground, shake it out, get a little loosey goosey again. Whew. All right, get comfortable, kick it out it out, whatever helps, okay? Now again, we're gonna practice that short stance pyramid on the leg that we were previously balancing on. Let's take that left foot back, 
walking step. Again, just a short stance, nothing fancy, okay? Both feet flat in the ground, both toes facing the front of the room. We don't have to lock out the knees. We can keep them a little, you know, loose, okay? From our short stance pyramid, we'll go ahead and anchor both feet strong into the mat, toe to heel. Everything is connected, ready to, you know, take a grip, hold steady, okay? Keep the palms wide and tall overhead. And then exhale, drop those hands to your hips. Superman, Supergirl, however you want to imagine it, okay? Tall spine, wide open heart space, okay? Legs are strong, feet are rooted. We're gonna keep the hips where they are and push the heart forward with that tall spine, okay? We're gonna resist the urge to just kind of give up here. We're pushing forward. And if that means that we're not going as far into the fold as we want it, that's okay. It's not about how far the fold goes. It's about how you feel when you're trying to get there. Which reminds me, if that front leg, if the back of that front leg is feeling just ooh, too, too weird, soften up the knee a little bit, okay? No pressure. <sighs> Great breath in the body. Challenge the back of the legs for a moment. And when you're ready, let's soften that front knee so we can really anchor down. Push the heart tall and proud again. Relax the arms. Take your step forward, both feet meeting together. Shake it out. Let it go. Loosey goosey. All right. So let's start to move down into our cooling phase of our practice here. So we've made it through our transformation, our fire. Now let's cool off. Feet are strong beneath us, knees soft, spine tall, heart space open. <sighs> Tadasana, mountain pose. Unbent, unbroken. When you're ready, inhale, sweep the palms wide and tall. Lift with the hands, lift with the heart. Lean a little bit back. And then find your neutral spine and exhale, dive all the way down with soft knees. Whew, soft knees so that we don't feel like we're pulling anything too tense in the back, okay? Drop the crown of the head heavy. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. Excellent. Let's go ahead and take a step back with our left leg, a long step, okay? Flatten the palms to the ground and take the right leg way back. One more downward facing dog. Push the hips to the sky. Push the heart to the knees, soft or strong. Okay, pedal out the legs this time, one leg at a time. Walk the dog. Awesome. Okay, let's take this opportunity to lift up to tippy, tippy toes. And then drop the heels really heavy behind us. Okay, drop the knees to the mat. Untuck the toes. And this time, let's line up the palms beneath our shoulders, but let's practice a wide stance child's pose. So we're going to set our knees out to the edge of our mat or our beach towel, okay? So the knees come out wide, like in our butterfly, but we're gonna keep the two big toes together in the middle of the mat. We're gonna push the hips down to the heels, push the heart and belly heavy to the ground, okay? Right down the midline of the mat. Let the heart and the belly drop heavy, heavy. Maybe cross the arms under the forehead before you drop the forehead heavy to the ground as well. Or option to keep the hands way out and just rest the elbow and rest the forehead. It's up to you, okay? So our wide stance child's pose here. Let's rest. Let's take three great breaths, okay? And with the body, uh, with the belly and the heart dropping heavy to the ground here, we're trying to focus on stretching specifically the lower lumbar in our spine right near that tailbone, okay? And when you're ready, let's rise into our normal tabletop, resetting the hands, resetting the knees, and let's come into a seated posture. So however you like, we're gonna bring the hips to the mat, okay? We're gonna kick the legs way out long in front of us. Whew. sorry, Jeez. Okay, so, <clears throat> From our seated posture, just like before, we root the hips down strong, we stack up the spine, and we roll back the shoulders to open up that chest state. Just to give you reference, we move like this. 
Okay, so this is gonna be the hard part for a lot of us. Forward folds are not easy in our body, okay? So I wanna challenge you to choose to leave the knees a little bit soft today. They can be as soft as you need them to be, but to help us get a good stretch, let's point the toes up to the sky anyway. That way our calf muscles are a little bit flexed here. Okay, knees a little bit soft, tall spine, and just like in our forward folds, we're gonna leave the hips where they are, push that tall spine forward, and let's gently walk the hands out to the leg, okay? I say gently because I want your hands to be restful here, okay? We're, some of us will be able to reach the feet, and that's cool, and some of us will be able to strengthen those knees and still reach the feet, still cool, but I don't want you to get so focused on moving forward and reaching that you're dumping into the shoulders and rounding the back. Okay, so we want to keep the shoulders back to a restful place, restful hands, and we want to keep the spine as tall as we can. That way we're protecting our back and we're not dumping into our shoulders. Okay, wide open heart space, heart reaching forward, just moving into whatever space the body welcomes us into today. Okay, with our inhale, Build up the spine tall and proud. Let's go ahead and walk those heels in a little bit closer and let's try those breathing um, breathing boat poses again. So I'm gonna move a little further away from my cow. Okay, so for boat, we've got the spine tall already. We're just gonna set the hands beneath the soft part of our knee to help us start with a little balance. And then we're gonna lean the heart back at an angle. Again, trying to keep it tall, we don't wanna dump. Okay, tall, okay. Let's try and lift the heels off of the mat and just hold for a moment. Take three breaths, just trying to stay still, okay? Try to keep the feet flat to the front of the room like you're gonna push off of the wall, okay? Maybe keep the heels lower if you need to, or practice coming up to parallel with the knee, or practice pointing to the sky. Whatever works best. Whew, can't stay there, so I'm just gonna, there we go. Okay, let's try three breathing boat poses here. When we inhale, we're gonna reach the feet out, ooh, like a hollow man, and then we're gonna exhale, ooh, fold back up. Ooh. Inhale, reach, exhale, fold, inhale, reach, and exhale. That's it, let's drop the heels to the ground, let the knees fall away from each other into a diamond shape, soles of the feet, hug each other in the middle. Butterfly pose, like I mentioned earlier, excellent place to stay in mindfulness if you need it. Soles of the feet together. They can be as far away from the torso as you need them to be. Give yourself space so that the knees and the hips are comfortable. Okay, uh, you guessed it. Tall spine, open heart space. Okay, let's go ahead and anchor our palms to the front of our shin bones. Pull the heart a little bit forward. Tall spine. Okay, don't give up on yourself here. It's too easy to get so caught up in how close can I get my heart to my feet? That you start to sink down with the chest and roll into the shoulders. Give yourself a break, roll the shoulders back, keep the spine tall. If that means you're not moving that far forward today, who cares? Who are you trying to impress? You don't have to impress anybody. <sighs> All right. Inhale, rise back up, tall spine. Stand those knees to the sky. Okay, let's roll back on our mat. Again, I have my pillow and I have my towel. Both are excellent options to help me ease any tension in my hips, in my shoulders, or behind my head on the mat when I'm ready to roll back. I'm not gonna use any today because I felt like they got in my way last time, but we'll see. I'm gonna roll back on the mat, either using the support of my hands or just trying abdominally to roll back. It's up to you. Ooh, awesome. Okay, so if you don't have enough space to spread the palms out wide like a letter T, what you could do is bend in the elbow and plant the palms parallel to the face here so that you kind of have like a goalpost arms, what we call them. Okay, so if we've got that space available to us, all we have to do now is just rock the knees a little bit side to side, see how you feel. We're just trying to unwind any tension we may have built up in the low back space from all our forward folds. And then we'll stand the knees straight up to the sky. And my next challenge for you is to lift the right foot off of the mat. Okay, take that right ankle, 
and cross it over the top of our left knee. And just hang out, okay? So we're making a number four shape with our legs. We don't wanna to push too hard into the ankle itself, so make sure you've got the shin bone lined up across the top of, the shin bone lined up across the top of the thigh so that two strong bones are interacting here. We're not dumping into our foot and doing a little too much with the hip, you know? Okay. So from our number four shape, let's lift our left foot off of the mat and then send the palms around the back of the left thigh going through that uh, space that we created with the right leg, okay? Once we've got the left thigh supported, we're in reclined pigeon posture. So you could choose to let the left leg rest as it is. Sorry, squirrels. Uh, you could bend the knee super strong, bringing the heel close to the glute. Or you could point the toe way up to the sky. You could stretch the leg around in the air. No matter what you choose to do here, as long as you have the left thigh supported, you're a reclined pigeon. Um, try to resist the urge to shrug the shoulders forward. It's super easy to get that started here. So try to roll the shoulders back. If that means that you're just hanging on to the uh, grip of your pants, if that just means that you're letting it hover on its own and you're just trying to see where it's at today, that's okay too. You don't have to fully bind yourself up and get uncomfortable if you're, if you're not ready for that. Okay, pace yourself. Let's go ahead and let the left foot rest down to the ground and then let the right foot rest to the ground. Rock a little bit side to side just to kind of reset the spine, reset the tailbone. Excellent. Okay, let's come to neutral. And wherever the hands are comfortable as we start, we'll go ahead and bring the left foot off of the mat, lace the left ankle on top of the right thigh. Again, Strong bone across strong bone. We want the shin bone crossing the thigh bone. We don't want to push into the ankle and like turn the hip out too hard, you know? Strong bones crossing here. All right, when you're ready. There we go, awesome. Let's go ahead and move into our reclined pigeon again. Let's go ahead and lift the right foot off of the mat. Try to reach the hands around the back of the right thigh using that open space we created with the left leg, okay? Option to let the right leg extend as it does comfortably, or to bend the knee really tough, bringing in the heel close to the glute, or to stretch that right leg way up tall. Whatever you choose to do, you can roll around, point the toe, flex the heel, you could just stay still, try to pull those shoulders back down to the earth so it doesn't feel like you're shrugging so hard. And we've gotten our way into reclined pigeon pose anyway. So, take a few Strong breaths, see how you feel. If you need to loosen up the grip a little bit, or if you think maybe that you could wrap all the way around the shin bone as well and bring it in a little bit closer. Keeping those restful shoulders, that's the important part, trying to be restful shoulders, okay? And from our reclined pigeon on this side, let's release the right foot, let's release the left foot. And moving into our final relaxation, like our first video, I want to offer three of my favorite opportunities for restfulness. If you have low back tension throughout the day, if it tends to get worse at the end of the day, I'd like to recommend broken bridge posture, which would be setting our feet way out to the very edges of the mat and then leaning the knees against each other in the middle of the mat. Okay, That's our broken bridge pose. It's gonna tug on our IT bands in the outer thigh and it's gonna stretch a little differently in the, in the hip and thigh. Just notice what you, what you do feel when you practice. And it's supposed to help us level the pelvis as neutral to the ground as we can get it without putting in extra muscular effort to get it there. Um, so more of a restful neutral, okay? Remind yourself to relax the shoulders away from the ears. Here's one opportunity for final restfulness. You can stay here for five or 10 minutes if you want. Okay. If you're not so worried about the low back space today, you could do the invert of this posture by bringing the feet together in the middle of the mat and letting the knees fall apart like our diamond shape, our butterfly from earlier. Those feet can travel as far away from the body as you need them to. You don't have to bring the feet up super close to the pelvis. Give yourself space. Let the hips and knees figure out what's comfortable for them. And then you kind of get a passive stretch across the, uh, uh, the front abdominals. Great. But then relax the shoulders again. Okay, so we've got broken bridge. 
for low back. And we've got a butterfly for our hip opener. If neither of these feel like a good option for you, of course you can kick both feet out to their own corners at the end of the mat. You can sweep the palms out like a gingerbread man, out wide maybe, maybe overhead you could reach, or rest the hands over the heart or over the belly. Whatever feels natural for you. Find a nice, comfortable place that you are ready to rest in, maybe for a few minutes, maybe for not very long if you don't want. But come to a place where you can relax the face, the eyes, the jaw, and just breathe for a few moments. And you can pause the video here or you can continue on with me. But I'll move on to our final mindfulness moment. So whenever you feel ready, you can begin to build yourself back up into a, any seated posture that you like. So for me, that's going to look very different than for you. And for me today, it might look a lot different than what it looked like for me yesterday. But we'll find any seated posture that we're comfortable with. I'll come back to happy pose again. You don't have to go to crisscross happy pose if you don't want to. You could find butterfly, you could kick the legs out long. Wherever we are, we're gonna root the hips down strong, just like when we began. We're gonna build up the spine tall and proud and relax the shoulders away from the ears. We're gonna relax the face, the eyes, the jaw. And again, we'll come into a place in our mind without judgment, without expectation, and without the need to accomplish anything at all. It's at this place at the end of our practice that I'd like to thank you for choosing to share your time with me here today. And again, it is the light within me that honors and bows to the light within you. Namaste.